next fight in the card is going to be a flyweight battle between Rogério Bontarin from Brazil and Manal Cop from Portugal. Manal Cop goes by Starboy. He's 17 and 6 overall, 3 and 2 in his last five fights. A favorite on the money line at minus 235. He hails out of Portugal, 28 years old, 5'5 five five in height with a 68 inch reach. He trains at a VS team. As for Rogério, he's 17 and 4 overall, 2 and 3 in his last five fights. A dog here plus 190. He hails out of Piranha, Brazil, 30 years old. 5'5 five five in height with a 67 inch reach. He trains out of Gal Ribeiro team. Only two years apart in age and size and reach wise almost identical. As for the numbers on Tapology, it appears that Cop is the public favorite, getting 90% of the votes. Only 10% of the public votes coming in for Bontarin. I also like Cop to win the fight. I think he's got the knockout power to finish this fight within a distance, but Bontarin is a good fighter and he's a live underdog in my opinion. Now, looking at the striking numbers first, for Bontarin landing 2.63 per minute, absorbing 3.27. So not a very high volume striker and has a negative striking ratio. As for Manal Kopp, averaging 4.69 strikes per landed per minute, absorbing 4.59. So a little bit more volume than his opponent here, but not the best striking defense. As for takedown offense, Bontarin is averaging 2.9 takedowns per 15 minutes with a 51% takedown defense. For Cop, averaging 0.77 takedowns per 15 minutes with an 80% takedown defense. Cop will need to use his takedown defense at some point because the numbers suggest that at some point Bontarin will look for a takedown, averaging just about two and a half takedowns per fight. Looking at the fighter profile for Ruggiero Bontarin, he's from Piranha, Brazil, where he still lives and trains. He actually works on his family farm. He's a black belt BJJ. He began mixed martial arts at the age of 18 years old. He went pro in 2013, so he's been a professional mixed martial artist for about nine years. He earned his UFC contract in 2018 via the Dana White Contender Series with a round two submission win over Gustavo Gabriel. He fought for Immortal FC, XFC, Brave CF, and Katana prior to the UFC. His last opponent was Brandon Royval, who he lost to last year by split decision. He was a plus 135 underdog. Royval is a very good fighter, not a terrible loss. Again, split decision, one judge thought he won. Prior fight, Matt Schnell, 2021, also last year, won that fight by decision as a plus 140 underdog. He also lost last year to Kai Kaikara France via a round one knockout. He was a minus 145 favorite coming to that fight, just about to pick him. But Kai Kaikara France looking pretty good. It was an early knockout, one of those situations where you kind of chalk it up as a flash knockout and you move on. He fought Ray Borg, 2020, lost that fight by decision. He was a plus 125 underdog in that fight. Now, some things I like about Bontarine. Number one, very good finishing ability. Of his 11 wins, 9 by finish, 6 by submission, and 3 by TKO. He's a balanced fighter who can find a path to victory both on the feet or on the ground. He's a tremendous grappler with good BJJ skills. In this matchup against Cop, he will have a significant advantage on the ground. Cop is very athletic, so he can use that athleticism at times to maybe get out of some submission opportunities. If the fight's on the ground for too long, there will be a big advantage there for Bontarine. Now, my concerns for Bontarine, he's on a bit of a tough streak. He's lost three of his last four fights. He, he has an overall good fighting game, and he's a balanced mixed martial artist. He's not a one-dimensional fighter. He is a balanced mixed martial artist, but he will require his BJJ skills either through a submission or position control to win the fight. As for Manal Cop, he's got dual citizenship in both Angola and Portugal. He's the first Portuguese slash Angolan fighter in the UFC. He went pro in 2012, so been a pro for about 10 years. He fought in Ryzen, cage fighters, and knockout championships prior to the UFC. He's the former Ryzen Bantamweight champion. He first signed to the UFC last year. He's got a 2-2 two two record in the UFC. He's the number 14 ranked flyweight currently in the UFC. His last opponent was Zagas Gulov, who he beat by a round one TKO. He came in as a big favorite at minus 300 and got the job done. Very nice, impressive knockout. His prior fight, Ode Osborne, round one TKO as well with a flying knee as a minus 200 favorite. So his last two fights, very exciting, showing his full potential, dangerous striker. His prior fight before that, 2021, split decision loss to Matthias Nicolau as a minus 120 favorite. A very close fight, could have gone either way. It was his second UFC fight. His first UFC fight, Alexander Pantoja, lost by decision 2021 as a minus 110 pick him favorite. It's my opinion he learned a lot from those first two fights. He's getting better, making some improvements. So those first two losses, I don't hold that much against him, and they were by decision. Now, some things to like about Manel Kopp. Number one, very good finisher. He's had eight straight wins by finish, seven by TKO, and one by submission. So clearly, he's a lethal striker. He's very athletic athletic and very quick. He should have the quickness advantage in this matchup. He's not known for his wrestling, but his wrestling is pretty good and especially his wrestling defense. So when Bontarine attempts to take him down at some point in the fight, he should have good enough takedown defense to deny most of those takedowns. He's not a very high volume striker and at times can get caught looking for the perfect punch, but the stats don't lie. He's averaging almost twice the amount of strikes compared to Bontarine. Now my concerns for Cop, he has not met his full potential. He's still that kind of fighter where you're looking at him as a guy who has the potential, knockout power, very athletic, but hasn't put it all together. This would be his biggest win of his UFC career because Bonsarine is ranked number eight in the division. He could possibly catapult himself to the top 10. And my last critique of him is sometimes he's caught looking for the perfect shot. He needs to keep his volume going, let his hands go, the fights we watched every day on this film, we watched Bontarine versus Kai Kaikara France from last year, Bontarine versus Snell from last year, and Bontarine versus Roy Val from last year. We watched Kopp versus Nikolov, Kopp versus Osborne, and Kopp versus Magulov. All of those six fights from these two fighters were all last year. These guys are very active fighters. If you want to watch any one of those six fights, they're available as part of our free video library. If you just look down below on YouTube in our description, you'll see those six links available.
my final few thoughts on these two fighters. Experience-wise and fighter IQ, very similar. They both fought by the same quality of opponent, same amount of fights, and about the same age. As for cardio, neither guy has an advantage in that department. They both have finishing ability. I believe the fight does not go the distance. There'll be some violence at some point, either Bond 3 getting a submission or Kai getting a TKO. So when it comes to finishing ability, I'm not sure either fighter has an edge there. Who's the better striker? I think Cop has an advantage there. One, because of more volume, but number two has more striking power. For Bon Tarine, his advantage will be on the ground. He's the better overall grappler. Now, Cop has pretty good takedown defense and he's very athletic, but Bon Tarine clearly has the edge when it comes to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and he will attempt at least a few submissions in this fight. The props I like for this fight the fight does not go the distance, it's minus 190. That's probably my favorite prop. The submission prop for Bon Tarine is plus 500. I'm going to definitely put that prop. A round two submission win for Bon Tarine is plus 1,400. I'm going to probably play the round two submission win for Bon Tarine and round three submission win for Bon Tarine. My thinking is that the fight goes on and Cop gets a little tired, maybe round two, round three, Bon Tarine can get the best of him, catch Cop making a mistake. Now the decision prop win for Bon Tarine is plus 550. I like that because the reality is if it's a close fight, there's some grappling going on. Bon Tarine gets some back control, maybe gets a body triangle, wastes a round or two that way, wins by decision at plus 550, survives the full distance. I can see that. I'm also going to play that prop as well. Now, the TKO prop for Cop is plus 130. Not a ton of value there. The bookies know he's most likely to end the fight by TKO. I'm not going to play that prop, but it is a likely scenario. Now, starting round two is minus 350. I like that prop. I'm going to play that as a parlay piece. My thinking is simply this. If Cop gets out there in round one, measures distance, takes his time, doesn't get too overzealous, bonds where you get some clinch control time, next thing you know, we're into round two. I like that spot for a prop. Round one TKO finish for Cop at plus 360. Now that's the TKO prop I do like for Cop because my thinking is this, he comes out in round one, measures distance a little bit, and then once he finds the opportunity, he unloads and catches Pontarine with one shot. All it takes is one shot from Cop. He has a lot of power, much more punching power than his opponent here, Bon Tarine. Regardless, I think this fight does not go the full distance, and that's probably my favorite prop here. The minus 190 spot for the fight, not going to decision. It's a big fight in the main card. You get the number eight Bon Tarine versus the number 14 Cop. I'm excited to see this fight. I hope Cop can meet his potential, but could Bon Tarine come in here as a plus one in the underdog and win? Absolutely, probably by submission. Take a look at that prop if you haven't done so already. That's the breakdown, guys. Let's move on to the next video. Here we go.